Hello everyone and welcome to the Downtown Gallery, downtown Cartersville, Georgia. I'm Seth Hopkins, the director of the Booth Western Art Museum. And if you haven't ever visited our gallery here in downtown that we run through our Artist Guild, I invite you to come check it out. Around the outer walls of the uh, gallery, we have artwork done by the members of our guilds. We have a writer's guild, a photography guild, and an artist guild. And every four months, they get the chance to put work in here into a juried exhibition. And it's all for sale, so it's your chance to come by an original piece of art by a wonderful local, regional, or national artist, because we have all types here at the museum. On the inside of the walls of the gallery, we have prints, reproductions, and original artwork by artists who are in the museum's permanent collection. So if you're looking for something special as a gift or something for your home, this is a great place to come and see it. And it's run by one of our wonderful employees, Melissa Tanner, and I'll let her tell you more about what's going on this four-month period. Thank you, Seth. I love having the opportunity to work with such an enthusiastic and talented group of members. And this is our new winter exhibit that we've just opened this past week. And uh, it displays the works, new works from the artists and photographers. And also they were allowed to bring pieces that were shown at the Booth Museum's Borderlands Gallery. So that uh, since those shows were virtual, this gives them another chance to be seen. And especially in person, which you can get a, a feel for the artwork. I love seeing it in person. And so our gallery also adheres to all the safety guidelines. Uh, we clean and sanitize daily, and we have plenty of room for social distancing. distancing sorry. So we welcome everyone to come and pay us a visit and see what we have to offer. And if you can't come in person, we're offering our flip books for each guild, the Photography Guild and the Artist Guild, which will be on our website and our Facebook page. That gives you an opportunity to sit in your home, enjoy viewing the art, and if you see something you like, you can give us a call. All the information, the contact information, will be on the web page and the Facebook page. So you can give me a call if you see something you like, and I'll be so glad to help you with it. Our web page is Downtown Gallery at BoothMuseum.org. Our Facebook page is Downtown Gallery Cartersville. And our phone number is 770-387-4330. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. You do a great job here. And uh, we always hear from our customers. They love working with you. And uh, as you said, the best way to come see the work is in person. And we are taking care of all the safety protocols to make it as safe as possible. But if you can't do that, do take advantage of the flip book and see if you might find something you like and Melissa can send you extra pictures or tell you more about it. I wanted to tell you about a few of the highlights in uh, this four month show, the winter show that we have up right now. Uh, this piece right here by Dennis Chambers was in the Photography Guild exhibition. It was one of my favorite pieces in that show in the Borderland Galleries. I love seeing it every day when I came to work and so I'm happy to see it here again. Uh, Lincoln Memorial, one of my favorite places in the entire world, and I think it really captures the character of that uh, incredible place in our nation's capital. Uh, I always love seeing pieces that are travel pieces from all around the world, and uh, this piece by Peter Pino uh, looks to me Scotland, uh, Ireland, that part of the world, and uh, really captures the green uh, that you see in that part of the world. And then, of course, we're very partial to the West here at the Booth Western Art Museum in the Downtown Gallery. And uh, this piece by Lyle Courier, I think, really gives you that flavor as well. So really a range of work here in the exhibition. As you can see as we pan on around, and you see some really creative pieces, like this piece up here, which has script in the back of it. I don't know if you, how well you can see it. Maybe we can zoom in on that. But that piece is by Dean Kelly. And it's just got written script in the background behind the boat. And it looks like the boat is kind of in a sea of grass almost. So it's a really uh, creative piece in photography. And it's always amazing what the photographers can do these days in layering images and bringing in different things to create a composite image. And this one right below it by Dan Gellinall is uh, incredible as well. Layers of light and texture. And it's called Manchester Mill. And I uh, really like that image a lot. The uh, Photography Guild actually does awards for their exhibitions down here at the Downtown Gallery. So you'll actually see some ribbons on some of these pieces. Uh, this one by Sally Hale was the winner of the second place award, and it's called Transparent. Here we have uh, two more of the uh, winners in the Photography Guild exhibition this time, and they're actually by the same person, Jen Cardinal. 
first place winner on the top is called Street Musician, and the one on the bottom is uh, on a country road in Texas. And uh, I've been plenty of roads in Texas, but I've never come across an image like this. So really incredible capture on that. Love the lighting in it. Both of these pieces truly wonderful and uh, certainly deserving of winning an award. And uh, right next to those, a cool piece by Pat Stevenson. Uh, I'm assuming this is shot somewhere down near the Jackson Street Bridge, which is a favorite location for our photographers to go, where you get these incredible pictures of the cars coming and going off the interstate. And she's really divided this up into several slices and really created a really fun image out of it, more so than just the standard image you see from that spot. So great job, Pat. Among a whole bunch of really talented photographers in our guild, one of them is Jerry Black. And these are both his images. Uh, the top one is Klingman Sunset. I'm assuming that's Klingman Dome up in the Tennessee, North Carolina mountains. And then this wave is really cool. Uh, I've tried to capture waves like that myself many times. Never got even close to something this powerful. Really a great image. And then again, when it comes to creativity, one of the outstanding members of the guild is Darcy Pino. And she did this piece with the mask and the butterflies. Really creates a real fantasy image and a lot of fun. Be great to have that in your house to live with and just escape into it when anything's get you down or anything. If you've ever watched any of the programming that I do, you know I'm a sucker for a good title, so this one certainly captures my attention. It's called Boxwood by Julie Lowe. And a couple of really cool scenes right next to it. On the top by Michael Rogers, a nice beach scene, Rosemary Beach, and uh, right below it, the Atlanta skyline with a uh, thunderstorm coming through by Mr. Roberts. So another cool image of Atlanta. Another great way of looking at it. I always love it when I see new takes on scenes around Atlanta, just a different angle you may not have ever seen before. Marietta Diner, certainly a classic location near here, but a completely different look at it. And uh, that was also in the exhibition, I believe, at the museum, as was this piece called Up, Up, and Away. And uh, really a unique angle and uh, shot from the bottom by Bob Kaspar. And uh, this one is by Alvin Robinson, another talented photographer. And one of the honorable mention winners here, Evelyn Prasari. And this is her piece called Tent Still Life. Certainly deserving of honorable mention, if not even better. So again, another great western scene, the Grand Canyon here, shot by Joel Lieberman. The clouds really add a lot of depth and drama to the image and uh, give you a view you don't always see the Grand Canyon. And then I love this one. It's almost an abstract image with the uh, struts and the uh, covered bridge there. It looks a little like the one out near Harley, but I think this might be somewhere else. But this one is called Built to Last. Again, a great title and a great image by Scott Blaker. Whenever I'm here in the uh, gallery, I'm always looking at the photographs. They remind me of paintings. I'm looking at the paintings. They remind me of photographs. It goes back and forth for me all the time. Uh, the one on the top here by Joel Lieberman called The Palouse. We had an exhibition a few years ago of an artist named ZZ Way, and he was in the Palouse area, and so all of his images had these rolling hills, and so it gives me a fond memory of that. This, a wonderful image in its own right, though, with the hay bales, really adds a lot of dimension and depth to the image. Really well captured, beautiful light in the sky. And then I love this one down here called Into the Wind, the horses in a blizzard. And it reminds me of some images we have like that, both in the photography and the painting collection. But uh, I've never seen one exactly quite like this, and uh, really a stunning image. I can't imagine how cold it was out there getting that image in the first place. And that's by Gracelyn Franco. And congratulations to a couple more of the winners in this four-month winter period here at the Downtown Gallery. Here we have Dennis Chambers, Born to Win, and uh, that's what it says on his t-shirt, Born to Win. And uh, this is out of the tradition of street photography, a uh, well-captured image, and uh, really gives you something to ponder about what's going on in his world and uh, what, uh, what circumstances are, are going on for him. And that uh, perhaps has a little lot uh, to say about the pandemic and the period we're going on right now. And I think that's certainly the case of this image over here that uh, won, an on, or won the uh, curator's choice that Sam Gerace gave, and that's called Lonely Street. And uh, that looks to be like a New Orleans type area, and uh, normally it would be crowded with people, I think, but there's nobody there. It's just a lonely street. Uh, maybe Heartbreak Hotel is just around the corner, I don't know. but. Uh, Certainly a wonderful image, and again, uh, well-deserving of Sam's attention as a Curator's Choice Award. 
as was this one uh, deserving of an honorable mention. So that's a quick look at uh, some of the highlights in the Photography Guild exhibition for this four month period, the winter sale. Please come in and check them out. And uh, now we're gonna go over to the other side of the gallery and check out the artwork from the Artist Guild. Okay, apologies to any of the photographers. If I didn't mention your image, it's not because it's not a great image, it's just we have limited time and so I was trying to hit some of my favorites and if I didn't mention you this time, maybe we'll get to you next time. Now that we're over on the Artist Guild side of the exhibition, same thing, I just want to point out a few of my favorites, but there's lots more to see, so definitely come in, check out that flip book on the website and take advantage of looking at all the art. It's a wonderful joy to live with original art. And, uh, you know, the prices are very reasonable on most of this work. Uh, G. McDonald Coker here, I love the uh, black and white image, and it's called A Light Touch, and it's $225. I mean, where else are you going to find a handmade gift of that quality that you could give somebody for that kind of money? Palmer Rhodes, who's actually the president of the Artist Guild, has a couple of pieces in this time. And this one's called Smoky Sunset, and I know where she was when she did that because my wife and I were out and visited her in Jackson Hole, Wyoming this fall, and it was smoky. The smoke from the wildfires in California was making everything kind of diffused light, and so I think she's really captured that in this piece. It's cool to see it here in the gallery. In addition to really talented local and regional artists, we do have artists with a national reputation. Hubert Wackerman is an artist that's actually in the permanent collection at the Booth Museum. Uh, shows in galleries all over the country. Often his work shows up in some of the auctions. And here's a couple of his pieces. He's a German artist but lives in Marietta, Georgia. And uh, he did this buffalo piece here and the uh, Indian warrior here behind me. So a chance to pick up a nationally known artist right here in your local hometown gallery in Cartersville. Melissa has many artists who exhibit with her year after year, quarter after quarter. But we're always excited to also get new talent in the door. and. Uh, this piece right here by Don Van Pernis is a new artist. He and his wife are both exhibiting here at the gallery for the first time during this winter sale. And uh, this is interesting. This is an artist from Alaska, Donna Katati, and she sends her work all the way from Alaska to show it just here in the gallery. So it shows that we truly have a national uh, recruiting net for artists and we have stuff coming from all over the country. You never know where things are gonna come from. We also have a wonderful piece here by Kathy Kaspar. Uh, her husband was in the uh, photography side of the exhibition. And we have a lot of husbands and wives who do it together. Either they're both photographers or both painters. Some, they're kind of split. There's one in each guild. So it's fun to see them come in and bring their work together. A wonderful piece right here in the corner by Susan Gore Gardner. And it's a musician who's really getting into it on the guitar, playing it hot and heavy. And she's really captured the emotion in that piece. And she's done it in pastel, which is certainly a difficult medium. Uh, and it's fun to see a wide, wide range of media that we have here at the, mu at the museum and here at the gallery. A lot of watercolors, oils, pencil work, but uh, pastel is fun to see as well. And I think she's done a great job with this one. As we turn the corner, a couple of really fun pieces here. One by my good friend, Gary Worthen. I've known him 20 years. Uh, he was one of the first artists who ever came to see me at the museum. And, uh, Took some workshops and he's just continued to get better and better over that 20 year period. And I really like this one called A, a Well Lived Life. And I think it's wonderfully paired in the way they hung this exhibition with the one down here called Loyalty, Thy Name is Dog. And a great piece for all the dog lovers. And uh, just a little nod of the cap to the west with the cattleman's uh, name there on the box. So a couple of really cool pieces that would look great in any house. Another of our regular artists here at the gallery is Nikki Davidson. And uh, she's a well-known teacher in these parts. She's done a number of workshops through our Booth Artist Guild. And that's something I probably should have mentioned earlier is that we do have training for artists and photographers all the time. Uh, the Photography Guild is always having uh, classes. And right now, of course, they're all online generally. So it's a great opportunity to take advantage of that while you're at home. Uh, the Artist Guild is doing limited workshops in person, also doing demos online on a regular basis. And uh, as I say, Nikki is one of our really stalwart instructors. She teaches very regularly at the Guild. And uh, as you can see, she's a wonderful artist and be a great person to take some classes from. If you're interested in that, check out on the Booth website, the Artist Guild's webpage, or get in touch with Kent Mullinax, who's the manager of the Artist Guild. As we turn another corner here, we come to the work of David Jones, this wonderful boat painting called The Centurion. And uh, I love that title. Of course, it's the name of the boat 
And maybe it was and maybe it wasn't. Maybe he's taken a little artistic license and uh, come up with his own title. Be fun to ask him about that. And uh, another C picture kind of next to it here by Linda Lanham. And uh, it's a riff on a Western idea. It's called Don't Fence Me In, which of course is a great Western ballad. Don't fence me in. I can't stand hobbles and I can't look at fences. And uh, here we though we have a beach fence. So a little rift on the Western idea there. Nice job. Melissa tells me one of the top sellers here at the uh, gallery is Cecile Morgan and she ships her work all over the country. People uh, find it on our website, really enjoy it, uh, particularly the uh, cowboy pieces that she does. Imagine that, associated with the Western Museum, the cowboy work does pretty well. Uh, below that is a wonderful piece by Ann Curry, uh, Chattanooga artist that I have the opportunity to know and have been to her studio and does beautiful work as well. And one of the relatively new artists in the gallery uh, from Atlanta and a really talented artist is Larry Breland. And uh, he did this beautiful flower for us this time. And I think that would look great in anybody's kitchen, dining room, breakfast nook. Would really brighten your day every morning and uh, would get you going. And I don't think you'd ever get tired of looking at it. And uh, that's the mark of a really wonderful painting. Even though it's so simple, it uh, I think would brighten your day every day. Unfortunately, we're nearing the end of our tour, and uh, we've looked at a lot of wonderful art, both by our Photography Guild and by our Painting and Sculpture Guild. And we've seen a lot of beautiful pieces, these being no exception. Uh, Brita Roberts here, a wonderful piece, kind of a Mediterranean-looking scene called Old Carmel, so that would be Carmel, California. And uh, maybe if you turn the corner, you'd run into Clint Eastwood. Of course, he was once the mayor of Carmel, California. And uh, Lana Smyer here on the bottom, a wonderful piece of a deer look great in any house where you like wildlife art and uh, the fleeting glimpse of that deer right before he runs off. But you've got him captured in your piece of art so you don't have to worry about him running off. And then I thought I might finish up by highlighting this uh, piece by Martha Choate. Martha and uh, her friend Sue Jackson were two of the first artists that ever came to the museum. They were two of the first people to vol volunteer and become docents at the museum. They've been involved since day one which is now 20 years. Uh, hardly seems possible, but it's wonderful that she's still painting and doing beautiful work and sell a fair bit of her work here at the gallery. So please take advantage of this opportunity you have if you're anywhere near Cartersville. Come see the museum, obviously, but don't miss the downtown gallery as well. Wonderful artwork by these guild members. And don't forget, we do have artwork from artists who are in the permanent collection at the museum. We have prints and reproductions of that work as well. So much more than uh, just the guild's work available. So plenty to come in for and uh, see our good friend Melissa Tanner here at the gallery. Find something nice to take home and uh, brighten your home, brighten your day with original art. That's going to do it for me, Seth Hopkins from the Booth Western Art Museum in the downtown gallery in Cartersville, Georgia. Check out our flipbook on the website and find something you like. <laughs>